Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain. And I'm Danielle. And today we are going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Mineleaf. So this edition of Mineleaf has been published by XV Games. And I want to start by giving a big thank you to XV Games for sending me this review copy of Mineleaf to yep. play and, and review and do some content with. Um, before we get too into this, though, I do want to throw out there that if you're in a position to and you'd like to help out the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description down below where you can get access to some videos early as well as behind the scenes videos and the ability to request review and tutorials to your favorite classic games. And if you'd like to get some cool gamer gear, either shirts or mugs, etc., there's a link to my, my Teespring store also in the description below. So now, uh, Mineleaf was published, this version is published by XP Games, mm -hmm. and it's designed by Andy Hopwood, uh, which I'm going to show that real quick. I love the fact that what is in the last name, it's a leaf game. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I was going to say, and I understand the name is named after another person's uh, last name, some friends of his as well, uh, which is kind of cool. Now, this, this, um, so this is the, the 10th anniversary edition because this game was originally self-published by Andy at the 2010 UK Games Expo. He had made like a handful of copies, showed up, entered it in the abstract game design contest and won. With like, he came, he showed up with like 20 copies. Like it was a ridiculously oh small number because he had, he had made them himself um, and, and managed to win the best abstract game of 2010 at the UK Games Expo. Wow. Which that's actually like a really... That's big. Yeah, it's a really cool story. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so XV Games had licensed to release uh, in their Games and Bags line. They do their travel games. And this is that version. So to start with, what do you get when you get the XV Games? You get, of course, the lovely felt bag, which comes with all these leaves or the spaces on the board on the back and on the front. You know, it says XV Games, Mine Leaf, and the, and the designer. And then you get uh, the rules. Yep. Now, the rules are... are fairly easy on this it's only two pages lots of diagrams to show you what they mean um it's kind of deceptive though because actually this game is fairly advanced for how short the rules are yeah. would you agree to that uh, yeah i mean it's pretty intuitive though it is and, and the rules are very easy to understand they're very well done and there's lots of great diagrams but what i just mean is like with a, definitely a brain burner sometimes. Yes. <laughs> like with the two page rules, you're, you'd be expecting a very light little game and then yeah. you play it and you're like, wow, there's a lot to this. Like these simple rules really turn into a, a, a brain burner of a game. Yeah. And the rest of the pieces are the wooden tiles, which you've got um, brown and orange wooden tiles mm -hmm. and they each have four different symbols. So you've got uh, these. And let me get the other two symbols up here. You've got... This one here, and that one there. There we go. Those are all the symbols. We're going to show you how what these mean and how they work while we're playing the game. Uh, but that's, I mean, that's basically it. It's a very it's simple. You have um, 16 tiles, rules, and the bag, which has the board on it. And that's the entire contents. So without any further ado, I think we're going to jump into the table, and, and we're going to run through a full game of this, because this is so fast that... Um, I, we're going to be able to get through a full game of this, no problem. And then we're going to come right back and we're going to talk about how this game plays and feels and we're going to rate it and review it. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. So here we are set up to play a game of Mine Leaf. Uh, I am on this side of the table and I'll be playing the brown pieces. And I'm over here playing with the orange. So now the way this game works is that brown goes first and brown has to play one of their pieces on one of the edges of the board. As you can see, the board is a four by four grid. The leaves are the spaces. Now, whatever piece I play is going to dictate to Danielle where she can play. Now, there are two pieces of each variety and each one dictates a different area that you can play in. So these ones that have the leaves going in diagonal, uh, Facings. These ones mean that she would have to play diagonally from wherever I play. So if I, for instance, played here, she could play here or here. Here, here. Exactly. Now, this is the inverse of that. It is only orthogonal placements, either vertical or horizontal from where you place. This piece here 
uh, means you have to play adjacent to it somewhere, either orthogonally or di diagonally adjacent to this location. And this piece here means you have to play non-adjacent to this piece. After I play my first piece, when Danielle plays hers, hers will dictate where I can play, and we'll play back and forth until one player has played all their pieces, at which point the other player has one more piece they can play, and then we count up points. You get one point for getting three in a row, either orthogonal or diagonal, or two points for getting four in a row. So without any further ado, we're going to jump into it, and I'm going to describe any other special situations when they arise. So I'm going to start by, I'm going to throw, it's got to be in a, hmm. The first one does I'm have gonna, to be on the outer yeah, side. Yeah, it's got to be on the outer side. So I'm going to throw it, I'm going to throw it in the corner there, and uh, limit you to only three possible locations you can play in. Mm hmm Let's see. Now that is interesting. Um, let's see here. So I cannot play adjacent to it. So I have to play along the outer edge, either here or here are the only places I can play, which is quite interesting. I'm gonna play here and make you have to play over here by me. Well now, I am going to play a very tactical move. I'm going to play here like this and force you to play somewhere over there <laughs> so that you can't block off the, the lines I'm trying to make, hopefully. Hmm. That was good. That was a good play. I like that. Um, definitely. Now the question is, do I want to block you or do I want to continue one of my own lines here? Okay, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna kind of try to block you and see how that goes. I think though, this may have been a mistake. I was not totally sold on that move before I made it. And that was the problem. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you got your three in a row there and you've blocked me from making mine, uh, which definitely became a bit of a problem. And I've only got one You've location. Got the primo spot. <laughs> I've got one location I can go in. Uh, I am going to have to go there, but um, the choice was what piece to play. Oh. Okay, now that was interesting. I'm gonna go right there and make you play somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> jerk. So now for those at home, uh, Danielle has played an amazingly tactical move. Uh, this move means that since every location I could possibly play in is blocked already by a piece already on the board, I have to pass, which means Danielle gets to go again. And when she gets to go again, she can play anywhere. Which means Danielle is <laughs> basically, you yeah, you blocked me again, which means you get to go again. Yeah. And Danielle's pretty much clinched this game. Um, yeah, uh, go ahead. I'm only going to get three points wherever I go, so. Uh. Well, you're getting a lot. No, you're getting a lot of points. You're oh, I know. I remember there. this yeah. last one. I'm just like, I can't get Yeah, but still, I, I, I actually don't have any points on the board yet. Um, Now I get to play one, and it will not get me any points on the board. So glad this is the one we videoed. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say, because, like, I've, I've won or tied with you until this game. Yeah. <laughs> but you just slaughtered me. This was a, this was a shutout. So just to cl be clear now, um, Danielle played excellently. Two points here, one point there, and one point there for a total of four points for Danielle and zero points for me. So I, I, uh, I was beaten handily. Good game. I was gonna say, do I get one, one? Oh one, yeah. And then two. Thank you. One, one point. two, three, four, five. Yeah, you're right. You have five points. Well, okay. Not that it matters. Ru <laughs> yeah, rub it in. <laughs> okay, welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Mind Leaf. And uh, just one thing I forgot to mention is, because uh, it wasn't on the bag, it's always on the, the rules with, with XP, so I totally forgot to mention. Two-player game, 10 minutes. Um, 
and ages eight and up. So first off, um, 10 minutes is a good estimate because that's actually... It's about the, right. Yeah, these games are light and fast. Like you shoot through them. I, we usually play a few of them. We go fast though. I feel like we play a lot of abstracts. Yeah, but even even if you're new to it, you're not going to go above like 15. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's no, it's for such sure. a quick game because it's just, I mean, it's a handful of plays and then and then you play again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As for the ages eight and up, um, I think this might be a little low for this. I always feel like they overestimate the age, but actually like two eight-year-olds would be fine together. But the complexity of this game is such that I feel like there is a steep learning curve. So I think the eight and up might be a bit of an underestimate to play it properly is that does that it's always so hard to gauge because every kid is different this is true but yeah i'd say average kid probably i'd think more 10 versus 8 you see I, I was thinking the same thing yeah I'm, I'm thinking it should be maybe a little high not a lot a couple years yeah definitely but, not like 14 or anything but like i mean two two eight-year-olds i think would be fine once you taught them the rules on this i think it'd be okay yeah. Uh, I just don't, I think the problem comes when you have kids playing against adults because of, of what a steep learning yeah. curve there is on this. It's kind of like with chess. Like, you know, sure, an eight-year-old can get chess, but when they play with their <laughs> parent, they're never going to win. <laughs> you know? That's true. Unless they're a chess prodigy. But again, that's yeah. the... Or the parents letting them win. Or the parents letting them win, yeah. So, all right. So this game is, um, it's, it's an abstract laying, abstract strategy tile laying game. But the most interesting thing about it is how your choice in what tile to play dictates the possible locations your opponent can play in. Great. That That is the the definite unique element to this game. That is the thing that sets it apart from other either tile placement games or abstract strategy games. Mm -hmm. is, is the fact that you're, when, you're, when it's your turn to play, you are 100% tied into what your opponent played last for where you can play. Yep. And being clever about that can really work your opponent into a corner like you did in the in the game with me yep. you worked me into a corner like two turns in a row where i i, I had to pass because uh, so i fun. well that's i mean that's that's what's what's killer about this this game is being able to do that yeah i mean i was paying attention to what you still had left over and i don't know if you paid attention to what i had i was I trying sure to, to have yeah. like one of each and every single thing just in case so you have the variety yeah i had the variety where you kind of like used up half of yours and you're like oh i have very few options now yes <laughs> and and, I, and that's the thing is like so and that's why it's when i'm when i'm talking about the learning curve with this so okay on the base level you're like okay i understand what the piece is me yeah so when you play a piece i'm like okay i know where i can play and mm -hmm. when i play a piece i know where you can play and on the base level you're good with that but then like the next level up is is sort paying of paying attention to what has been played <laughs> right paying attention to what's been played and what your opponent has on the board because it is complete information you can look over and be like okay you still yeah. have that available and the next level on that is starting to plan multiple moves out because you're like okay but if i play here they can only play in one of these and they're probably going to play there and if they play there then yeah. i can play here and you were definitely doing that to me in the example game uh -huh. you, you like shut me off every every which way um and if you can do that like um you can really shut down your opponent mm -hmm. like like we should we've had some very close games yeah most of us are ties honestly we get like <laughs> so close i think i got nervous while we were filming live oh, okay, and, and, and and yeah i'm gonna blame it sure on that. it's that it's not that i'm <laughs> no you just you, you absolutely destroyed me you absolutely destroyed me uh credit where credit is due but um it was funny that we had such a one-sided one since most of us have been really close oh, yeah. uh, or ties we're normally tied most um of the time. <laughs> so but um but yeah you absolutely destroyed me when we decided to film it but uh, the learning curve i think is one of those things where i feel like it's both a positive and a negative so like on a negative side games with high learning curves can be tough for new people to get in when you're playing against an expert things again like chess um like i you know chess can be tough when you're learning chess if you're playing against an experienced player because they're just going to kick your butt up down left right and sideways and and it feels like it's really hard to catch up to them there's a similar feel to this it's not as steep of a learning curve as chess yeah but it's similar yeah well, and then plays quicker so that's it, nice it does play quicker <laughs> and then on the on, on the way the learning curve is positive there's a lot of replayability to this because you can just keep playing and keep learning and keep improving and being like there's plenty to discover plenty to learn yeah. um as long as you are old enough to do so which is again why i think eight might be a little bit of an underestimate 
I do know when you first explained it to me, it took a sec to click that when I played a tile, it was dictating where you were going. Because in my mind, it was dictating my next move of where I was going. Yeah. And remember when you were explaining it, I was like, oh, it's like tic-tac-toe. And you're like, no. And as soon as we played, I was like, no, it's not like (laughs) tic-tac-toe. It's like tic-tac-toe is like much smarter, like father, like grandfather. I don't even know. Uncle. (laughs) There's, there's. I, I would say you you probably have to play at least one game before you even get the base concepts. Yeah. But then, in addition, you have to play a few games. I would say probably like three or four before you properly grasp the concepts and really yeah. play this game properly. It, there's there it really does have. I I've said it before, but it's got a learning curve. It's got a heck of a learning curve on this one. And but once you get into it, if you're fairly well balanced with your opponent, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Oh game. yeah, I really like this one. It's it's very clever. And again, it's it's ten years old. Uh, I would say it definitely holds up. Yeah, I also love the like graphics on them too. With the little leaves. Oh yeah. If they point into the right directions. Like it just looks really nice. And for the production, the colors are great. <laughs> oh yeah, I love the orange and the brown. And for the production, I definitely I love the wooden tiles. Mm-hmm. The wooden tiles are. Well, yeah, hold on. <laughs> Clacktastic. I love I love chunky wooden bits, you know, especially like th- these do feel quality and these feel really nice. Yeah. Um it doesn't feel like a low quality wood. They feel really lovely. Um Okay, do we have any we, we're, we're raving about it a bunch. Do we have any downsides we want to talk about? I did say my my one brief one is uh the learning curve mm-hmm. can make it difficult to get into with someone who's already experienced with it. Do you have any downsides you want to draw attention to? I honestly can't think of any. No, I really like this one. Yeah, this this is a really good game. Um, it definitely holds up. It, it I can see why it won the award. This is a very well thought out game. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting. The the whole mechanic of choosing limited locations that your opponent can then play in and trying to conserve pieces and plan ahead. It works out. Yeah, it's very aging well. really well too. Yes, it's it's a very elegant design and it has aged very well. It definitely stands up to modern abstracts and modern tile laying games. This is a really good game. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna. Do you want to go first or do you want to go second on the rating? Um, I can go first. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Oh, and before we rate, did you have anything else you wanted to say or talk about with Mind Leaf? I actually think this might be my favorite of the XB games. <laughs> so. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna say because I'm not quite up there. I'm going to go first. I think okay. you're going to be higher. So That's we, should, we should end on the higher rate. That's fair. Because then now, now, now I'm pretty sure you're going to be higher than me. I quite like this game, though. I think this game is a lot of fun. I just don't think I'm going to be quite as high as you. And that's why I am at 7.5 stars out of 10 for Mind Leaf. I think this game is really great. This is a game I would play just about any time. This is a fantastic pub or coffee house game that you can bring with you on the go. Just like all their games and bags line. Uh, this is this is definitely worth a buy. Uh, absolutely Awesome really enjoy it um the steep learning curve is the only thing that keeps me from getting into like you know super amazing territory but this is still super great so 7.5 is like super great to me and this is a super great game uh yeah mind leaf i would definitely recommend to buy if you like tiling and abstract strategy games yeah yeah mine's a lot higher i think i'm gonna give it like a nine Whoa! I, would, I know i know but it's like it's wow! so good for like the size and the quality and just how quickly it plays Yes. Yeah, like it's definitely, if Christmas hadn't already happened, it would have been on my Christmas list. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is. No, I agree with you. I think it's great. I, I, I definitely, and actually I would say this is, this is two thumbs way up, uh, 7.5 and nine stars respectively. That's huge. This is a very highly rated game by us. Um, I like this game a lot. You obviously, obviously I adore really it. like it. Yes. It's, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, yeah, no, this is a really cool game, and this is one I'm going to play a lot in the future. And um, uh, yeah, okay. Anything you want to add? Or I, th- I think we're actually. This was a quick one. I think we're coming no, to the end. I of it. think that's it. Yeah. So yeah, definitely give it a shot. Try ve- it out. Very clean design. Very mm-hmm. elegant. Very cool tiling. Abstract strategy game. We can definitely recommend this one. Uh, so if you enjoyed this review and tutorial, and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like. Share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, either on the game of Mind Leaf or on this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And until next time, game, game on. on.